How to Train Your Dragon caught the attention of the company in 2004, and after Over the Hedge was finished production in around 2004 to 2005, Barney Arnold became interested in the project and started development on it. Initially, the plot was a lot closer to the book series, and the directors of Lilo and Stitch were brought onto the project. A lot of extensive research was done to accurately capture and depict flight and fire, since the former would be the biggest draw in regards to 3D effects, and the latter because animation could break away from the limitations in live action films. Changes in the film were plenty. Hiccup didn't have a love interest in the book, and Toothless was an entirely different dragon, as he was a lot smaller in the book, but producers wanted him to be large enough to write on for the cuteness factor. They had to complete a lot of the film in a year due to developmental issues in regards to the production. The film starts with dragons attacking the village called Burke, with the narration of our main character, Hiccup, explaining the dynamics between dragons and humans, specifically dragon hunters. Despite being the son of the chief, he is not good at being a dragon hunter, so he decides to create machines to help stop them but they always fail. This causes conflict with his father Stork, Stoic, who is the best dragon hunter out of everyone, and demands Hiccup to stay back with, while the real folk do their thing. The inciting incident comes to play when Hiccup ends up catching a dragon, but it takes a while for him to finally see it and find it. He's perplexed when he finally sees it caught in one of his traps. To prove to himself that he could kill a dragon and to be like his father and everyone else in his village, he tries it but cannot bear to do it, so he sets the dragon free. Act 1 comes to an end with the lock-in of his father enrolling him into dragon fighting classes for him to prove his worth. Hiccup is nervous and excited at the same time because he is finally with the group of teens he idolizes, which includes the girl Astrid he has a crush on. Of course, Hiccup's classmates do not take well to him, and he performs poorly. None of them want anything to do with him, and lecture him for not putting all of his effort into it. They see it as him not taking the program seriously in compared to them, and I do see both sides of this. All of them are given a book to study in regards to dragons, but none of them read it but him. Hiccup goes back to visit the dragon, and starts to learn about it, including eating habits, hiding their teeth, so on and so forth. It's really cool how the scene is executed to develop their dynamic, especially because at this point they aren't even friends. He manages to fix his bottom wing by making a replicate, which will be a foreshadowing moment of a later event in the movie. After being the only one to read the book, Hiccup starts to perform a lot better than everyone else in the class with his new friendly tactics with the dragons. All of the classmates but Astrid start to be impressed with him, as her aggressive manner is not working for her anymore. While this is happening, he's continuing to study dragons more and more. Stoic gets the news that his son finally beat a dragon, which he's thrilled by, and despite that, they still struggle to bond with one another. Astrid has finally had enough of Hiccup beating her and acting sneaky, so she demands him to tell her how he does it after following him to discover Toothless. This leads to some ride on Toothless and they end up kissing. What? We'll get to this when the time comes. The end of Act 2 is when they are taken to a cave where they see that all of the dragons are given food to some alpha dragon. We can clearly tell that Act 3 will lead to and be set up as to whether Hiccup should protect the dragons or to complete his test to become one with his people. It's time for the test, and Hiccup is nervous about how his father feels. He shows them how dragons can be controlled, while declaring that he isn't a dragon hunter, but his father demands that they fight, and the dragon loses his mind. Toothless overhears this, and decides to go to Hiccup's rescue, but because he is a knight's fury, all of the hunters want to capture and kill him. Stoic disowns his son for not telling him about protecting the dragons, and Hiccup ends up revealing about the dragon's island. This causes the father to rally the troops to go over there to capture them all, while Astrid manages to convince Hiccup to save Toothless and the other dragons. What happens after this is very obvious. 
The men have a hard time defeating the head dragon. Stoic has a change of mind regarding hiccup and dragons, while the two species learn how to work together. Everything turns out perfectly, but remember when I mentioned about a foreshadowed event? That ultimately takes place when Hiccup ends up having one of his feet amputated, which was definitely shocking. Overall, Berk becomes a place for humans and dragons. Pros, pros, pros. There's actually quite a lot to say, but I'll try to shorten it for length purposes. Obviously, the animation is completely stunning. DreamWorks really upped the scale in regards to their motion scenes, filmography, and textures, which made it so brilliant to watch and to invest heavier into their world. I like that while the human and dragon designs are cartoonized, they aren't ridiculously so, like so many films tend to make their characters, since there's still realistic element to it. I definitely liked a lot of the themes in the movie. There's the father and son dynamic that is broken, and we really get to delve into the clashes between a parent and a child, which is pretty much ignored in animation in general. There's so much subtlety that is put into expressions that show that they want to get along and to make things better, but neither of them can or know how to. This is really relatable, and I never thought a GMAX film would resonate with me so well in such a realistic way. What really shocked me was how they handled ableism in the film, and they never made it into such a huge deal. Toothless has one of his bottom wings broken, and a big deal isn't made of it, and he's still able to function well which of course happens to Hiccup at the end of the film as well. This easily could have been done just to make them connect in another way. It's funny and weird how much I ended up liking the characters, since all of them had their little charm but were all so different. I think the world building contributed to me liking them so much, which really is a strength for the film. You understood Hiccup's motivations, Stoic, Astrid, so on and so forth, which is a rare accomplishment. Great ensemble cast and dynamic. Speaking about the humor, there are absolutely no pop culture references whatsoever. Even in, in Kung Fu Panda, there was a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor with some modern catchphrases that were slightly jarring, but there was none of that in this film. There was a lot more clever and under-the-radar wit that was actually appropriate, which is something I appreciate from GMarks, and I hope it's a thing that they continue with. Even I have to admit that there is some predictability in the movie. But that can be said for every movie. You knew what was going to happen and how they were going to do it. They did it well enough to the point where you don't care that it's predictable due to how well rounded everything ended up being, but you can still definitely tell that it's going to happen in the same way nonetheless. It led to some of the plot points becoming rushed and a blatant example of this is how quickly Astrid and Hiccup's relationship progresses, which can take you out of the movie and lead you confused. When the film was released on March 26th, 2010, it became a big success for the company. Financially, it grossed $217 million domestically and $277 million internationally with a worldwide amount of $494 million. This was enough for them to create their fourth franchise and the sequel was put into production right after this film's release. Critically, it is debatably the most acclaimed film of DreamWorks' catalog, often being debated as being not only one of the best DreamWorks films, but one of the best animated films of this current decade. Unfortunately, it was against Toy Story 3 in regards to awards, so while they were nominated for the same awards, and this movie did win a few, it was mostly overshadowed by Toy Story 3. Either way, it made people take DreamWorks a lot more seriously and validated this belief of a new resurgent era that has been in the works for a few years. In conclusion, How to Train Your Dragon managed to capture the serious, in-depth, and witty essence of some of DreamWorks' earlier works while creating them from out of genuine interest and love instead of revenge, which showed in the work. I mentioned in the Monsters vs. Aliens review that the animated film business was becoming a lot more crowded and competitive, which we will see come to form, and after this movie, DreamWorks decided to go back to releasing 2-3 to three films a year as a response to this. The biggest example of this was Illumination Entertainment debuting their smash hit Despicable Me, but we will get more into that into two reviews and how Illumination ended up intertwining with DreamWorks. Walt Disney Animation Studios themselves finally recovered from their decade-long dork era, with Tangled being released later on in the year, 
and Pixar still continued with their success and make them opposite with Toy Story 3. As of right now, DreamWorks could still catch up, but it would signal where things eventually went wrong once again. Ultimately, things were finally going up and they were finally getting the respect they deserve after over a decade of trying to grasp at anything, to the point where some are considering them to be just as good, if not better, than Pixar and Disney. As some franchises went down, others went up, but no matter what, both ended up being profitable, starting off the new decade in brilliant fashion. Based on their history, DreamWorks manages to oversell and overproduce their franchises, which causes them to decrease in quality. Whether this happens with How to Dream Your Dragon is something that will still be considered to be a potential option in regards to the franchise. We will just have to wait and see what happens.